Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Friday Facebook video. My name is Caitlin, I'm a registered dietitian and I am here with Gino Pallet today to talk about intermittent fasting, which is something that you've probably heard of before. Maybe you've even tried it yourself, um, but I'm here to just give the dietitian perspective on this style of eating, this diet pattern, um, and talk about some of the evidence-based research that is surrounding this topic. We do have some information on it. Um, there are some health benefits, uh, there are some disadvantages, and populations that might benefit from it more than others. So I'm going to be talking about that today. The intermittent fasting that I'm talking about is the time-restricted eating uh, style. And so really what I'm talking about is restricting your, your eating time window. So that might look like only eating for eight hours of the day. Um, maybe it's only eating for 10 or 12 hours of the day, depending on um, you know where you're starting out and what your day looks like. So how it works is um, you look at the full 24 hours of the day and you pick a time to start eating and then time to stop eating. And then the rest of the time you're fasting. So uh, if, for instance, if it's an eight and 16, you would be fasting uh, for 16 hours and then eat for eight hours. So it's really just about um, narrowing the time window that you have to eat food. So what happens when we restrict the amount of time we have to eat food is we actually unintentionally go into a caloric restriction because uh, we just have less time to eat. And so this unintentional caloric restriction is really um, where we can get some weight loss and some potential health benefits. And so um, a lot of studies have looked at people who are over clinically overweight or obese and uh, look at a time-restricted eating pattern and they don't change the amount of calories people are eating intentionally. Um, they don't change anything about the eating at all. All they change is when they start eating and when they stop eating and they narrow their eating window. And they have found that people end up losing about three to four, sometimes 5% of their initial body weight um, over the course of two months. And so that's really important to think about as well is that it's over the course of a long period of time. It's really not a, uh, a tremendous amount of weight loss. It's a small amount of weight loss that can have some metabolic health um, advantages from it. So we've found that uh, people can sometimes have decreased blood pressure, um, lower fasting insulin resistance, uh, or lower fasting insulin, meaning less insulin resistance, um, people have lower triglycerides. There are these health benefits associated um, with intermittent fasting. However, they're also associated with weight loss. So we don't really know if it's from intermittent fasting itself or if, if it's from the weight loss, but either way, um, they are health benefits that we've seen, seen from intermittent fasting. And populations that this really works the best with is people that have a hard time um, counting their calories or um, figuring out how to restrict the amount of calories that they're eating um, and putting themselves into a caloric deficit. So those people usually tend to be those who don't have a lot of control over um, what they're eating. Maybe some other family member in the household is making the meals um, or maybe you're, you're eating at work. Um, or maybe you eat out a lot, you travel a lot. There might be a lot of different you know, reasons why you can't measure our food and track it and restrict your calories that way. And so this time-restricted eating works really well for that population because it's um, very simple. You start eating at one time and you stop eating at another time. Um, and it's just an unintentional caloric restriction um, that has a lot better adherence for some of those people. So um, people also sometimes don't feel as restricted with it because they're able to still eat their normal um, diet. It's just in a shorter window. So it is, that being said, it is really important to have a good diet in general. Um, so still making sure you're getting enough fruits and vegetables, um, 
legumes, whole grains, proteins, dairy. We don't wanna exclude any food groups. The only thing we're changing is the window that we're eating. And so when we do it that way, we can avoid nutrient deficiencies. Um, and really all we're doing is just cutting back a little bit of our calories. So that can work really well for certain people. People who want to avoid this type of intermittent fasting are people who are in positive energy balance, meaning they need more calories in than they're burning. Um, those people are children, pregnant women, lactating women, um, athletes who are trying to build muscle, really anyone who's trying to build muscle. Um, in addition to people that don't want to lose muscle, such as our elderly population, um, because it's harder to uh, get back that muscle as we get older. And the reason why we lose a little bit of muscle when we do intermittent fasting is because anytime we lose weight, we're going to be losing a little bit of muscle. Um, we lose a little bit of muscle, a little bit of fat, a little bit of water, um, anytime we lose weight. And so it's important that whoever decides to do this um, is able to regain muscle and maintain their muscle. So that's something to be cautious of as well. Even if you are someone who might benefit from um, intermittent fasting, it's important to um, recognize if it's not right for you. So some people don't do well with fasting. Some people get headaches, fatigue, um, sometimes they feel worse. And really, if you're getting these negative symptoms, that's not necessarily a uh, benefit to your quality of life. So it's important to realize, you know, if it's not for you, um, if it's not enhancing your life, then it might not be right for your body style, uh, your body and your lifestyle. So it might not even be worth it for those who might benefit from it. But that being said, um, the population that really doesn't cook for themselves or um, is having a hard time with trying this uh, caloric restriction um, can benefit from it from an intermittent fasting time restricted eating standpoint. So that's just a little bit about what we know about intermittent fasting. And if you have any other questions, I really encourage encourage you to talk to your healthcare about a healthcare provider about it, see if it's something that would work for you and, and would benefit you. Um, and have that guidance if you do try to do it. So that way it's safely monitored um, with that healthcare professional, whether it be your doctor, dietitian, um, nurse practitioner, whoever you are working with. So um, that being said, if you have any comments or questions, I would love to hear from you. Uh, just leave the comments below. Um, also, if you've had experiences with intermittent fasting, good or bad, I'd love to hear about them as well. It can always help someone else. So that being said, I hope you guys have a great weekend and thanks for tuning in.